we're Scott Golden here with the A um, the NWA uh, Into the Shadows pay per view review for the sixth of June two thousand and twenty one. I love these. Um, A NWA may not have the largest roster, and I get that. They are not going to have your five star Meltzer classics that he all but foams at the bounce for. But what they will have is decent wrestling. Uh, when Our Shadows Fall is their most recent internet pay-per-view um, event. And we do see some familiar names here. Joe Galley, Tim Storm, Lynn Velvet Sky open the show. Uh, there are some fans, although not many, La Rebellion... Messiah Wolf and Bista666 defeat Slice Boogie and Marshi Rocket and the end Odins and Paro and Sal Renaud and El Rude with Danny Deals in a Lucha Rules tag match. Uh, fun thing to open the show and stands out as different from the usual NWA stuff. They seemed to interject uh, a bunch of new life into the tag division and La Rebellion are impressive. They do a bunch of crazy stuff around Slice Boogie and Rocket are a good team and uh, Wolf and El Rudo start the match. A uh, bunch of Lupa, a bunch of Luchas to open and uh, Beast of 666 tags in and wrestles Ronaldo, Sal's wearing um, Mega Pals on the back of his tights, almost a reference to the Bang of pow Powers from years and years ago. Ronaldo tries to make friends with Abista, but that doesn't go well. Um, and Ronaldo, Slice Boogie, and uh, Mecha Wolf exchange a few holds, ending with Boogie hitting a German suplex on Wolf. Odin, and Amparo come in with some big power moves and take out Rocket and Boogie in the process. Boogie then goes for a lion salt. Odinson and Paro dodged. The end hits the Hell on Earth boogie, uh, but Mecha Wolf breaks that up. The end then locks in uh, some Lex Luger goodness with some torture rack and slams La Rebellion into the top turnbuckle. Renaro then goes for a handshake with El Rudo, but refused and grabs Renaro's hand and uses it to balance and climb the ropes and hit a moonsault for their trouble. Uh, Sal Renaro then goes for a dive, but Rocket cuts things off, then hits a dive of their own. Ronaldo then gets up and goes for a dive again, but then gets cut off by Paro, and Ronaldo yells, and Ronaldo then tries to choke slam Paro and realizes it wasn't going to work out and lets Paro. Uh, Paro then power bombs Ronaldo on the floor. On to everyone, uh, and then uh, Paro nearly dives, but Rocket cuts him off. Hits a cutter on Paro for two count, but Beasta breaks it up. Beasta hits a muscle buster on Rocket, and then Mecha Wolf hits a 450 splash on Rocket for the pinfall. Pope comes out for an interview and cuts a promo on Austin Idol and Tyrus, saying that it took. All three men to beat him because Tyrus was big enough to be two. And obviously a fat joke here. Tyrus comes out and said that it's Pope's fault. He hasn't challenged for the NWA World's Heavyweight Championship and said that he's going to dedicate the win to uh, Love Alive Charity, saying that he's taking it over, which is actually Pope's charity. Uh, Tim, Storm, Tim Storm informs Pope that he's been running a charity, that they've been running the charity for 10 years, helping people in need in Jacksonville area. Galley and Storm put the charity over before the match, which is a good thing, especially with all that's going on pre- and post-pandemic. Tyrus, with Austin Idol, defeats the Pope in a non-title grudge match. Match is way better than it deserves to be, given how bad Tyrus is, but he uh, doesn't exactly have the Cardiovascular conditioning to go into long matches. Uh, there is a flying crossbody by Tyrus, which is notable. 
Pope goes after Tyrus and starts beating him down in the corner. Tyrus then goes to the floor to get away from Pope and hits a series of punches. Tyrus then falls to the mat. Pope goes for a cover, but Tyrus immediately kicks out. Pope then hits a crossbody that bounces right off Tyrus. Tyrus then hits a crossbody of his own, after which uh, there's a little bit of surprise. Then Pope sold like his ribs were crushed. Tyrus then works over the ribs and uh, gets heat on Pope. Tyrus then hits a clothesline and then turns Pope inside out and then hits a suplex and sends Pope flying across the ring. Pope continues to take some attacks to the ribs but manages to make a comeback and a flying elbow off the top rope despite the injured ribs. Pope then goes for Elijah Express but Tyrus catches him with a tongue, a, uh, tongue and death grip. Tyrus then tries to pin Pope with it, but Pope kicks out. Tyrus in then is completely gassed out here and uh, goes for a sunset flip. Tyrus stomped uh, on Pope to break it up. Tyrus then goes for a bonsai drop on Pope. Pope gets his knees up and hits the Elijah Expl Express. Idol slips a... Weapon to Tyrus. Tyrus delivers a heart punch and pins him. Referees help Pope to the back and then um, then Tyron Tyrell and Kylie Ray defeats Thunder Rosa and Melina. I gotta grab my phone before going too terribly far into the future here. And as mentioned, I mean these matches are kind of, they fall so much flat. In in terms of, yes, Pope is an amazing talent. I don't think Titus is, is worth investing into the level they have. Um, but obviously they continue to, so they see something I don't see, or they're just stubborn, one of the two. In any event, um, that's that. And as we kind of go forward, certainly the NWA has a limited... Um, variants to choose from which i think hinders them a bit more than would be if there were more wrestlers out there anyway we go to uh tyron tyrell and kylie ray defeating thunder rosa and melina glad to see tyrell or, or glad to see kylie ray back in wrestling i know she has some um, emotional and mental health challenges in the past and hopefully she's doing well thunder rosa and kylie ray uh are capable of having amazing matches with each other uh, they also work well together as a team when needed. Um, and so Tyrell starts the match with Melina, which uh, was obviously not a strong start. Uh, Melina has some challenging history, as does the other individual here. Tyrell uh, hasn't wrestled in a long time. Ray exchanged basic wrist walks and exchanges with Melina. Uh, ends up better than expected. Melina sticks to uh, basics and pushes Ray back to the corner. Tags in Rosa, uh, who uh, starts working over submissions on Ray. Ray does an amazing job of selling. Rosa did a great job of making it look like she was trying to disembody the arm from Kylie Ray. Ray and Rosa exchange a series of Near fall attempts, and this looked really good, ending with Rosa hitting a uh, drop kick, and a beautiful sequence was had by all. Ray works over Melina's arm for a bit, slowing down and showing her own technical ability. Rosa runs wild on both women and um, hits a corner drop kick on Tyrell. Ray then hits a drop kick, and Ray goes right into the arm, and she's targeting earlier. Uh, Ray sells by moving her fingers and holding her arm, indicating that she's had some nerve damage here. Rosa picks up Tyrell and takes her backstage. Uh, Ray rolls up Melina in hopes the tights get, to get a pinfall victory. Uh, JTG defeats Fred Rosser. Not exactly interesting to see JTG back, but not a bad match by the stretch. Uh, both guys worked uh, reasonably well together, um, and Rosser and JTG do have a good chemistry with each other, so that works, um, 
and the match opens with basic action. Both friends go back and forth, ending with JTG hitting a drop kick after a couple of drop downs. Roster slips under JTG's legs, pulls JTG off middle rope and causes him uh, to head into the buckle. Roster then levels JTG with a lariat and back to the back of the head. Roster then keeps an advantage for several minutes trying to get submission on JTG, but JTG refuses to give. JTG ends up on the apron and floated over into a suplex attempt in the ring and hits a lariat. JTG fired up a series of clotheslines and hits a neckbreaker. And sweeping your Nagi for two count, JTG goes for a crucifix bomb, but Roster slips out and then has... Uh, a battle of the backslides. Uh, JTG manages a small package and gets a quick victory over Roster that might be considered a bit of an upset here. Uh, Aaron Stevens and Curtis defeat War Kings, Crimson and Dane, and Fifty Prisoners, Latmir, and Adonis to retain the Tag Team Championships. Decent tag match. Um, War Kings are a good team, and Crimson and Dane have. Their, their work together. Um, Stevens and Curtis has have been playing out the we don't work together well, but we still have team anyway. D, uh, um, anyway, Latmere, Dane, and Curtis start the match. Latmere attacks Dane and Curtis. This is a mistake. And Latmere then fades off. And they have a mean guy match. Adonis tries to sneak up behind and hit a clothesline, but that doesn't go well. Dane then attacks Curtis with a knee. Adonis hits a DDT on Dane. Referee stops and distracts Latmir, kicking on the stairs. Then Curtis hits a knee, leaving them both in rough shape. And then he explained before the match that the match wasn't uh, being contested by Lucha Rules. And then uh, difficulty... Uh, with guys in the Lucha match, and then, um, Crimson then gets in the ring, and Curtis leaves selling his knee, Curtis then, uh, doesn't give up and manages to dump Crimson to the floor and tags out Stevens, Latmir hits a run steam from Stevens, but then Curtis comes up from behind him, and Stevens... Uh, nearly punches his own partner, partner, but just gets stopped as Curtis and Stevens discusses the near blow. Adonis locks on the master lock, but Steven, but Crimson wakes up. War Kings manages to get heat on Stevens, and then that spills into the next few minutes. Latmir is playing heel, and there's a spoiler, but Latmir and Dane go after each other. Stevens makes a dive towards Curtis. Latmir and Dane both uh, stopped him with a brief show of teamwork. Curtis then yells at Stevens and encourages him, which is kind of interesting. Then there's a temporary alliance between the War Kings and Strictly Business, but that doesn't last for very long. Both teams obviously want to win the match and titles. Dane and Latmir hit a suplex on Stevens. Neither man allows the other to get the victory. Curtis climbs into the ring with a belt and tries to hit Crimson, but referee took the belt away. Referee turns away. Cr uh, Curtis boots Crimson with a low blow, and Steven scores a pin. Scores a pinfall. Curtis and Stevens high five each other uh, as the match closes. Anyway, Camille defeats Serena Deeb for the World Women's Championship. Uh, many would say this is the best match of Camille's career. Deeb made her look like a monster. Deeb is an amazing selling uh, person. Camille, um, AEW can benefit from using both of these talents in the future. A uh, feud between Deeb and Rosa would also be fun. Camille uses her size and power initially to dominate the match, and then... Uh, Deeb attempts to chop the giant down and wear her out with her technique and ability. Camille didn't get, didn't go down for a drop toe hold, and then 
falling, failing to overpower. Camille hits her elbows in the corner and Deeb, to, Deeb is in response. This makes sense, and as the story of the match, Deeb is smaller than Rosa, so she shouldn't be able to tackle, to take Camille down as easily. Uh, Deeb locks in a sleeper hold and tries to bring Camille down to the mat. Deeb then uh, continues to sell like a million bucks. Camille mauls Deeb for a few more minutes, goes after her back and her arms, but destroys Deeb with strikes and throws Camille uh, with a running power slam for two counts. And then Deeb uh, count continued to make Camille look like an amazing talent. Camille then goes at it again, but Deeb slips out and goes after the knee of Camille. Um, and Camille being off her feet is good for um, the serenity lock attempt. Deeb then hits a neckbreaker across the middle rope and then hits a flying clothesline and brings Camille to the mat. Deeb locks on an octopus stretch hold, but Camille tries to power out. Deeb floats over into the sunset flip and works through as Camille just picks up Deeb and hits a steamroller. Camille goes for a spear, but Deeb manages a drop kick for the knee. Deeb goes for a straight jacket pile driver, but Camille back drops out of it and goes for a spear. Deeb rolls through into a half crab, but Camille makes the ropes. Deeb then goes for a backslide, but her knee goes out, which is what she's out for, uh, what, what kept her out of action for months. Camille then locks on half crab of her own. Deeb makes it to the ropes. Camille hits another steamroller spear, and then Deeb manages, uh, or on Deeb, and then manages to score the pin, becoming the new champion. Then it's main event time. Nick Aldis defeating Trevor Murdoch uh, by DQ to retain the NWA Championship. Not a fan of the DQ uh, finish. And then uh, Aldis remains champion. Uh, two of Harley Race's students are going at it here in the main event. And um, Murdoch gets in shape. He's Skinnier than he's been a long while and able to keep pace with Aldous throughout the match. Murdoch splashes Aldous in the corner and goes for the top rope bulldog. Aldous falls back into the ropes, causing Murdoch to get crouched on the top rope. Aldous sends Murdoch to the floor with a baseball slide for his trouble. Aldous slams Murdoch on the floor and starts to work over his back and elbow, using uh, that in the ring against Murdoch and whipping into the corner. Aldous uses camel clutch. To continue to stretch him to the back and uh, apply his pressure. Murdoch then tried to stand with Aldous on the back and falls off the turnbuckle, breaking the submission, but can uh, Aldous tries to stay on offense. Aldous then slips Murdoch, who asks for second one, uh, and Murdoch falls back into the ropes and hits a clothesline on Aldous. Murdoch then hits another one, and Aldous kicks out. Murdoch manages to hit the top rope bulldog, but again, the champion kicks out. Latmere brings out a chair, distracts the referee. The referee is dealing with this. Aldous nails the referee with the chair, sending him to the floor, and then nails Murdoch with the chair and hits an elbow drop off the top on Murdoch. Announcers are angry over this. Aldous sees Murdoch as a threat, and he's deciding to take the referee out to avoid losing. He locks on the Texas Cloverleaf. Referee comes back into the ring and blames Murdoch for the chair shot and calls for the bell, meaning Aldous retains. Um, Murdoch goes to the podium and cuts a promo about how he's heartbroken that he didn't win the championship. He said he worked so hard to get there and apologized to the fans, saying that he did everything he could to win. He doesn't know if it's ever going to happen for him. Murdoch thanks the fans uh, for being there, and he leaves upset. Uh, the show closes with Velvet Sky tearing up, but Tim Storm is great. He looks into the camera and says that this was not the way things should end in the NWA. It was strictly business. Owes everyone an apology, and Murdoch should have been champion, but he got blamed for it. Uh, Joe Galley then promised that the situation would be addressed on the next episode of Power. Um, anyway, so 
So that is your pay-per-view. Decent pay-per-view, better wrestling than average, and overall worth checking out. Anyway, until next time, keep your feet on the ground, your mind in the moment.